So we are following the breaking news tonight of the latest indictment that appears to be related to, or, or at least adjacent to, uh, the Russia investigation. There have been a whole bunch of Russian nationals hit with U.S. criminal charges since Robert Mueller was appointed as special counsel to investigate the Russian attack on our election in 2016. A dozen GRU officials from Russian military intelligence were charged. Uh, a bunch of people employed by the Internet Research Agency in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, which was run by a Putin-aligned oligarch. That Putin-aligned oligarch himself has been charged by the Justice Department. His Russian company was also charged. But the only Russian citizen who was both charged by the Justice Department and then actually was arrested and turned up in a U.S. courtroom, there's only been one of them, and that is Maria Butina. She was charged last year with acting as a secret agent of the Russian Federation. According to prosecutors, she was dispatched by Russian government officials to infiltrate the Republican Party and the American conservative movement through the pretext of, of gun rights and the NRA. Well, the man who's the subject of this latest indictment tonight is described in the case against Maria Butina as her American boyfriend. His name is Paul Erickson. He's 56 years old. He's a longtime Republican Party and conservative activist, going back to his role on the Pat Buchanan for President campaign in 1992. This indictment against him tonight describes alleged crimes that, on the surface, don't appear to be Russia-related, um, they're basically just accusing him of being a crook, although there are some intriguing clues here. <clears throat> Let me read you a little piece of the indictment. Quote, from on or about 1996 to August 2018 in the District of South Dakota and elsewhere, the defendant Paul Erickson did knowingly and unlawfully devise a scheme and artifice to defraud and to obtain money by means of false and fraudulent pretenses, representations, and promises. Defendant Paul Erickson was a resident of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who solely owned and operated a number of business entities, including Compass Care Incorporated, Investing with Dignity, LLC, and an unnamed venture to develop land in the back and oil fields in North Dakota. The object and purpose of the scheme was for defendant to unjustly enrich himself at the, excuse me, at the expense of people he defrauded. The indictment goes on to explain that Erickson was persuading people to invest in these companies, named earlier in the indictment, uh, which, which supposedly built assisted living facilities in the case of Compass Care. Um, the Investing with Dignity one was supposedly a company that was going to build wheelchairs that would allow people using these chairs to go to the bathroom without needing help from somebody else to lift them out of the chair. The unnamed Bakken oil field ones was apparently a real estate venture, a home building venture for, uh, to, to build homes for, for workers in the North, North Dakota oil fields. In the indictment, though, prosecutors say despite all of those supposed investment opportunities, what Erickson was really just doing was taking people's money in amounts ranging from five grand from someone with the initials KH uh, to over half a million dollars from somebody with the initials VT. Now, what does this have to do with Paul Erickson's purported Russian secret agent girlfriend now that she's pled guilty and is cooperating with prosecutors? We don't know. Um, but in the indictment, somebody with the initials MB appears to have been paid out some of the proceeds of this alleged fraud. The indictment also flags a large payment from Paul Erickson to American University, where Maria Butina was enrolled at school. There's also a $14,000 cash withdrawal that is flagged by prosecutors. That occurs right at the time that Maria Butina and Paul Erickson were bringing a delegation of NRA officials to Moscow to meet with high-ranking Russian government officials. Joining us now is Seth Tupper. He's an enterprise reporter for the Rapid City Journal in South Dakota. Uh, he joins us by phone. Mr. Tupper, thanks for joining us on short notice tonight. You've been really out in front on this story uh, in South Dakota. I really appreciate you making time to talk to us tonight. Thanks for having me. So um, you would reported in the past year on fraud allegations that had dogged Paul Erickson in South Dakota um, that didn't necessarily seem to have anything to do with his involvement with Maria Butina and this somewhat exotic Russian agent case. Uh, given what you had learned about those fraud allegations against him and those sort of rumors about uh, potential financial wrongdoing by him, is, is this indictment tonight the kind of thing that you were ultimately expecting from federal prosecutors? 
Oh, uh, certainly, yes. Um, I did a profile of Erickson about a year ago, and, and for that profile, I analyzed a lot of court records and spoke to a lot of sources, and it appeared to me that um, Erickson's M.O. for quite some time had been uh, exactly what's described in this indictment today, that um, he uh, got close to people, um, he offered them investment opportunities, he even appeared to have somewhat of a form letter that he would send to people, hmm. uh, offering them these amazing returns on this uh, latest investment deal. And he would say that he was only offering it to friends and family and, and people that were close to him. And uh, people would fall for this, and um, he would make the money and, and move on to something else. And it was always just informal allegations of fraud. He had been sued a few times, but he had never faced uh, criminal charges until for any of this until today that, that I know of. Uh, the thing that stuck with me from your profile on Erickson about a year ago, this, this past February, uh, was when you quoted a Republican former legislator uh, from Watertown, South Dakota, uh, who told you, quote, he is the single biggest phony I've ever met in South Dakota politics. And that stuck with me all this time because I felt like, okay, well, there's some, there's some view of the ground truth about this guy, even if we still don't understand how that fits into this larger story about Maria Butina and the Russia investigation. Do you feel like you have any brighter window, any clearer window into how this fraud stuff may or may not relate to uh, his relationship with Butina and the larger case that she's involved with? Well, I think the relation is just that, you know, as I said, this has been his M.O., and, and it just led him. He'd been doing this, uh, as, we, as it says in the indictment, at least all the way back to 1996, allegedly. And uh, it, as he went from one thing to another, eventually he, he met up with Maria Butina, and that was, I think, uh, from what we know so far, um, uh, he got involved in just sort of another scheme with her, uh, mm -hmm. allegedly. This time it was he bit off a little more than he could chew, perhaps, um, compared to some of his other dealings. Um, but we also know that um, uh, from some reporting that I've done in the past that uh, Maria Butina had been offered um, um, by prosecutors here in South Dakota, um, perhaps been offered um, something in, ex in exchange for her cooperation in the fraud, wire fraud and money laundering investigation into uh, Erickson. And so there could be a connection there that could perhaps, I would suspect, maybe um, play a role in her sentencing if she did um, give investigators information on the South Dakota investigation and help them with that. Um, perhaps that'll that'll play a role in her sentencing, which which she's currently awaiting. Right. And actually, in terms of prosecutors narrative about her own case, that sort of cuts crosswise. If, in fact, as you say, she was helping prosecutors with this case against her purported boyfriend, uh, even before she was arrested in the Russia secret agent case. Uh, Tangled Web, Seth Tupper, enterprise reporter for the Rapid City Journal in South Dakota. Thank you for your help in understanding this story tonight. I look forward to uh, seeing you continue to follow this one up. Thanks, Seth. You're welcome, and thanks for having me. Much appreciated. All right, uh, much more to get to here tonight. I said it is a busy night. That includes the national president of the NAACP, Derek Johnson, who's joining us live next. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.